Okay, welcome everyone. Philosophy of health and wellness. This is one of my favorite presentations to do. Okay, so we're going to start with definitions. So if we want to be on the same page talking about anything, we would need to define our terminology. So philosophy is Greek for the love of wisdom. Okay, so the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence and this is really what we're concerned about, this definition of philosophy. Theory or attitude held by a person, meaning you, a person, or an organization, a nation, or something like that, that acts as a guiding principle for their behavior. Okay, so you have different philosophies about different things in your life. You have a philosophy about money. You have a philosophy about spirituality. You have a philosophy about health and wellness. Okay, so your, your philosophy is your belief system that governs the way you act. Basically, it is determining whether you, in your interpretation of how you view things through your filter, whether you're going to agree with something or disagree with it, and then that's how you take your action, okay? So that's why we're here tonight. We're going to be talking about the philosophy of health and wellness in this this is going to be good. So we're going to define health next, right? So a lot of times when we ask people, what is your definition of health? They're going to say, when I wake up in the morning and I don't hurt, I'm healthy. Or when I'm not sick, I'm healthy. Now, these are very, very weak, inaccurate definitions of health, okay? Because you can feel great and you could drop dead of a massive heart attack the next moment. So how you feel does not determine your health. Okay, so World Health Organization. You guys have probably seen this before in some of the presentations, but health is the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. That last part's important. Not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So. You can have some pain and some symptoms or some other things going on and still be healthy. That's the body's way of adapting sometimes. Okay. Did you know that if you do a Google search on the usage of a certain word, it will, it will show you how much that word is used. So this is the use over time for the word wellness. You see, the word didn't even really exist until sometime in the 70s, 80s. Did you guys know that? Mm -hmm. It's because the word health got transformed into something so completely the opposite of health that they came up with a new word called wellness. So really, it should be one and the same, but health care in our society these days is really sick care. Okay? Because you go to the medical doctor primarily when there's a problem. You typically don't go there and say, I feel great, I want to stay feeling great, check me out and make sure everything's in good balance. Typically the, the trip to the medical office, there's something going on. Okay, so the word wellness, this is really, really an excellent definition, okay? Quality or state of being healthy, healthy in body and mind, especially as a result of deliberate effort. Meaning preventative, right? Like you guys spending the time here tonight, this is part of the effort that you're putting in as far as your, your contribution towards working towards your health and wellness. An approach to healthcare that emphasizes preventing illness and prolonging life, as opposed to the emphasis of just treating disease. It's great, right? So we're going to talk about that. The philosophy of health and wellness. So when we're talking about your health, your wellness, there's a lot of different pieces to the pie. Okay? All, there's probably more than this, but I just put up some major examples, all right? So when we're talking about this, there's a lot of different things that we need to, to look at. And this should be in the handout, right? It might be in there somewhere. No. Okay. Well, you have to make a very good mental note about this. <laughs> Plus, well, I'll be putting this on my YouTube channel so you'll be able to, to reference back to it. So it's like... Not the picture, but it has the right Okay, so it is listed there. Good. So the quality of your sleep, you know, your exercise, 
nutrition, hydration, positive mental attitude, that's a part of your health, right? Oxygenation, okay, that has to do with exercise as well, but also just breathing, meditation, detoxification, and function. So function, this is the part that chiropractic is primarily concerned with, the function of the overall body, but these are all pieces of the pie. So if any one of these areas in your life is not 100%, you're not going to be 100%, and the other areas are going to start to suffer as a result. We'll swing back to that later. Okay, so we're going to be talking about two primary types of, of uh, philosophical reasoning, if you will. The first one's called inductive reasoning. Make sure you memorize this, make good notes, we'll keep giving you a quiz right at the end of this. Oh, that's what the handout's for. I know it's, it's going to get a little bit deep for a moment, but I think you guys will see why, okay? So in inductive reasoning, it's seeking more knowledge, facts and not so much an understanding of the big picture, okay? In inductive reasoning, the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. Okay? And typically, when it comes to health and wellness, as a result, you know, inductive reasoning is gonna to touch on many different areas in life, but when we're referring to health and wellness, an authority figure is telling people what they're supposed to think, do, or say. All right. For example, if I was to ask this intelligent crowd, what is normal blood pressure? What is the answer you're going to give me? And that's what it was in everybody's head, right? And let me ask you this. Where did that number come from? The authority figure. The authority figure. <laughs> the doctors, the nurses, the whoever checks it. At some point, what they did is they probably took 100 people, healthy people, measured their blood pressure, took the average, and it was about 120 over 80. For those who use, they needed nice round numbers, so they made it one, not 121, but 120 over 80. Right? That's where that number came from. So are you just the average person? Are you a unique individual? Are you different exponentially from the person sitting to the right and left of you? Of course you are. Your kids are. Everybody is. So what's, what's normal for one person isn't normal for the next person. Does that make sense? This is inductive reasoning. And this goes to show, it, it, it translates into a lot of different aspects of health, like blood tests and things like that. <clears throat> okay, so as far as inductive reasoning goes, imperative science, that means it works very well for mechanical things, like your car. You can take every piece of that car apart, put it back together again. The sum is equal to the whole of its parts. The whole is equal to the sum of its parts. Excuse me. Okay? But that doesn't work in living, living uh, organisms, okay? Because there's too many intangibles. So we can't measure you and say your blood pressure is 130 over 90 and say, that's too high. Who says so? Well, I'm the white coat doctor, I say so. Therefore, here's a medication that we're going to put you on to chemically, physiologically lower that. When we forget that, your body's intelligent. It doesn't do anything unintelligently. Sorry to tell you. Okay? The body's intelligent. So if your blood pressure is elevated, it's doing that for a reason, usually lifestyle related. So if we just say, here's a pill, take this, and then I'm going to measure it again next week. Oh, yes, it's lower. We did the job. Have a nice life. Stay on this for the rest of your life. We didn't do anything to address the cause of it. Does that make sense to everybody? There's too many intangibles when it comes to living organisms, especially the human body. Okay? And the life inside the body, the innate intelligence in the body, that's really the thing that we want to be focusing on. Okay? 
Now, a lot of times we say the science of medicine. I'm here to tell you that medicine is not scientific. You hear that world? Medicine is not scientific, and I'm going to explain why. Because for something to be scientific, it needs to be duplicable, reproducible, and predictable. Okay? And of course, there's major shortcomings when we apply that to living organisms. So chemistry, for example, is a science. You can take compound A, an exact amount, react it under a certain temperature and conditions, exact, with an exact amount of compound B, and you have a chemical reaction resulting in compound C. And you can do that over and over and over and over again and get the same exact thing every single time. Okay? So chemistry is a science. So if we take everybody in this room, we all determine that we're different already, and everyone just takes an aspirin, right? It's safe. Baby aspirin. Take one a day for the rest of your life. It's going to save your heart. No, not really. That's what they tell people, right? So is that aspirin going to affect every person in this room exactly the same? No. Or is it going to affect them, everyone differently? Of course it's going to be different. You see how the, it's not a science. That is not science. Your, your unique living body is so different from the next person, there's no way that they can predict any sort of result whatsoever. But they just take averages once again and say, well, it didn't kill too many people in our studies, so I guess it's safe. And then we wonder why they pull 10,000 drugs off the market every single year. Well, if they were so good, why aren't they still around? It's because they're injuring people, and then they, they try to get something else, or maybe their patent expired or something, right? And they can't make money on it anymore. All right, so we already determined this. No two people are exactly alike. All right. The opposite of inductive reasoning is deductive. Okay? So this is not looking for all the little parts, studying all the little bits and pieces and trying to bring that all together and say, okay, now we know the human body. We're looking for eternal truth or understanding of a basic principle. Okay? So when I talk about principle, I'm talking about universal law, like gravity, right? You drop something, it is a law that's going to accelerate towards the center of the earth, 9.81 meters per second squared. Everyone remembers this from the physics class, right? Every single time, a million times out of a million times, it is a law, right? If you dropped it once and it just hovered in midair, only one time out of a million, it would cease to be law. Does that make sense? So law is unchangeable, immutable truth, okay? And of course, all these laws govern our whole world. You know, Batman equation, right? <laughs> of course. Okay, so in deductive reasoning, it always starts with a major premise, meaning a baseline belief. Now, the, the drawback of a deductive reasoning is if your major premise is incorrect, everything that's sitting on top of it is also going to be incorrect. Okay, a priori means nothing before it. All right. So here's the major premise in chiropractic, but it's going to be health and wellness, natural health based, okay? That there is a universal intelligence in all matter constantly giving to it all of its properties and activities, thus maintaining it in its existence. Okay? Now, the, the original philosophers in chiropractic called it universal intelligence because they said the world wasn't ready to hear that it was God. And when people use the word God, they have a, everyone has a, a different view of it depending on their upbringing and things like that. So they changed the terminology to just be universal intelligence, meaning an organizational force that is intelligent. It's not random thermodynamics. Everything that governs is intelligent. 
Okay? <coughs> and if you think about it, okay, universal means, boy, it's everywhere. And just think about it for a second. <coughs> right? The, your, every part of you is made up of atoms, right? Nucleus, made up of protons and neutrons, and then you've got the, the atoms in the outer shell, or the, I'm sorry, the new, or blank in here. <clears throat> Not the protons. Electrons. The electrons. The neutrons. Electrons. It's almost dinner time. My, my brain is running low on, on juice. <laughs> All right. So if you think about it, the solar system runs in the exact same way. So life goes to infinity in the smallest and in the largest sense. And we sit here and we worry about how much snow are we going to get tonight? Am I going to have to plow tomorrow? When actually, you know, the entire universe and everything is just so broad. It's, just, it's too much for your, your mind to comprehend. But this is all in organization, is it not? We keep rotating around the sun and we can observe all the different stars and all these, you know, galaxies and everything out there. Think about the vast organization. Why don't two planets just all of a sudden collide and, or why don't we run into something on planet Earth? You know, the vast organization of everything is all around you. It's easy to forget about. I want to back up a little bit here. So the intelligence that runs the universe, we call universal intelligence. What do we call the intelligence that's inside of you? Anybody remember? You're born with it, so it would be called innate. innate intelligence. Very good. So the chiropractic term for the life inside of you, basically, the organizational force that is running your body. It's not running your dog's physical body or your spouse or a blade of grass. It's your intelligence that's inside of you. We call it the innate intelligence. Okay? It knows what your blood pressure is supposed to be. It knows what your blood sugar is supposed to be. It knows what your heart rate is supposed to be. It knows how to heal a cut on your finger. My innate intelligence can't do that for your body, but you have that for yourself. It created you from two cells and turned you into 100 trillion cells of functioning person. Okay. How are we doing so far? You guys good? All right. As you know by now, most of the advanced wellness workshops really just to get you thinking about your own health and wellness and your families and, you know, and for yourself. Thinking about things a little bit differently. Okay, so we talked about this already. So what runs all the function in your body? We already said that your body has an innate intelligence. So if you were to answer innate intelligence, that would be correct. Physically, what part of you is running everything? The function. Brain. The brain. Brain and nervous system, right? So I know that this should sound very familiar to everyone in this room. Maybe everyone that's watching on the video, this might be news to them, okay? But your, your brain and the nervous system, so your nervous system is brain, spinal cord, and nerves. What's the main job of the skull? Protect the brain. Protects the brain. And what's the main job of the spine or the vertebral column? Protect the nervous system. Yep, the spinal cord, which travels inside. <clears throat> Millions of nerve fibers traveling in one bundle, and then the nerve exits off there, right? So if the brain was removed, we better shift over to our super cool laid up spine model. Brain is removed. What's the result of that? Loss of function. Loss of function, 100%. Can you get up out of your chair and walk away if the brain is removed? Without the brain, you are dead. Okay? And let's just say that this is the nerve going to the heart. If this nerve got severed, what would the result be? Heart would stop functioning, right? So then, of course, the chiropractic principle 
This is working within the deductive reasoning, right? Because we know that the body's intelligent. We know that it knows how to heal itself. And it can't have any interferences. So if your spine, whose job is to protect the central nervous system, if that spine is subluxated, misaligned, represents interference on in how the nerves can transmit the life energy, the mental impulse, the result is going to look like this, right? But what if I feel fine? Am I fine? Am I healthy? Like this. Even if I have no symptoms? Absolutely not, right? So that's the purpose of chiropractic. It's to get everything corrected and adjusted and make sure that everything is in communication at all times. Okay.